Hi. Today we're looking at the 2006 Form B AP Statistics exam. Um, this problem was on that exam. It's one of the Part 2 questions. And we take a careful look at it. We'll see it's actually known as a one sample match pairs t test. So here's what they say the developers of a training program designed to the developers of a training program designed to improve manual dexterity claim that people who complete the six week program will increase their manual dexterity. And I guess they have a way to measure that. That's what this is saying. The measure of each person's dexterity is on a scale from one to lowest and nine is the highest. So with any of these problems, I always like to start off by looking at the data and just making sure I understand what it means, what they're telling me. So if I look at this first row of data, what I can see is, is that person number A, which is one of the first subjects, had a, dex a dexterity score of 6.7 before the experiment started. They went through this training program of some kind that the, the developers described, and afterwards, their dexterity was now 7.8. So if you think about it, there's people with various levels of dexterity, dexterity to start with. If we look at person K, for example, they had a very high dexterity score at the beginning, and they don't see a huge change during this program. And then similarly, there's some people, let's look at another one. Here's a person who has a pretty low score to start with, and then additionally uh, has a lower score at the end, but you still see an increase. So in this problem, what you realize, if you want to prove your program is effective, what you really care about is the difference. And in this case, I'm going to do after minus before, A minus B, because I want to see by how much did everyone improve their dexterity score. The question goes on to say, can one conclude that the mean manual dexterity score for people who have completed the program significantly increased? So whenever you hear that, can you conclude significantly increased? Is there evidence for? It means you want to do a significance test. First things first, let's add another column to this table where we put in all those differences and see what we get. I'm going to recommend, if you have a TI-84, to take a minute and put this data, put the first two lists into your calculator. We'll put this one in list one and this one in list two. To do that, you go to stat and you press edit. Okay, so just take a minute, pause this video and put that data into list one and list two. Okay, by now you should have it typed in. What you want to do now is go to the top of list three. So in your calculator, you go up to the very top of list three, highlight the, le the letter L3, and do the following. Do second two, which is list two, minus second one. And the calculator will quickly calculate all those differences for you. So I'm seeing 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 in that case. The person did not improve. 0 0.7, 0 0.5, another 0.5 here. We've got a negative 0 0.1, a negative 0 0.1, a point, 0.5, and a few more numbers here. What's interesting to see is that some of these numbers are negative, meaning these people, these people actually went down in performance after going through the training program. This program actually wasn't effective for them. So ultimately what we care about is the mean change in their dexterity score. You can do that in a TI-84 simply by pressing stat. Go to the right once to the calculate menu. Press number one, one variable statistics. And make sure you switch the list to list three. Calculate enter. You get an average increase. Oops, let's change my pen, sorry. An average increase of 0.375. And you make a note of the standard deviation as well. The standard deviation here is 0.367. So the question is, is this number here far enough away from zero for you to be convinced that this program is actually effective? So it's time to do what's known as a one sample matched pairs t-test. So how does that work? Start by defining a variable. We're going to say let mu sub d equal the after program score minus the before program score. And HO, our null hypothesis, would indicate 
the program is, doesn't do anything. It's not effective. So in which case we would expect that difference to be an average of around zero. And HA would be we think the program is effective. So just look back at how you subtract it. In my case, it is after minus before. We know that the that a higher score means you did better. So we would expect mu sub d to be not equal to zero. Let's correct that. Let's say greater than zero. Okay. So that's that. All right. Let's get on with it. First thing you do is check was there a simple random sample done, or was it some kind of random assignment? Let's see what it says. A random sample of 12 people, so that's always good. It's nice when they tell us that, otherwise we have to assume it. Check that off. Secondly, you have to check for something called independence. And for independence, you want to make sure that your population size is greater than 10 times the sample size in the problem. So there were 12 people, so 10 times 12 or 120 people, so we have to assume there's more than 120 people who've been through this program. And if that's true, then we know that the standard deviation of x bar sub d is equal to the standard deviation of the differences over the square root of the sample size. So we calculated that standard deviation of differences using our calculator. That number is right here, 0.367. So let's plug that in. 0.367. I'm going to divide by the square root of 12, just like we always do. This is known as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So I type that in. We end up getting a standard deviation of x bar of the differences to be 0 0.106. Okay, and then finally we should check for uh, is it safe to use the t-test? Sometimes this is called the normality check. Are we close to normal in this problem? Well, n is 12, which is not greater than or equal to 30. Otherwise, we would just say it's safe to proceed by central limit theorem, which we don't have here. So what do we have to do? We have to create a box plot. So you can do that in the TI-84 by doing the following. Press second Y equals for stat plot menu. Hit enter. Make sure you press select the on button. And when it comes to the graph, the type it'll say, go over to the fourth type of graph. It looks like this. It shows a little box plot with some dots. You want that one because if there's any outliers, it'll show you. And then when it says the X list, you want to select list three. Then just press zoom 9, we get a look at this graph, and here's what it ends up looking like. It's not perfect. I'm not excited about it, but it's not terrible either. So it looks kind of like this. Here we go. So you have to make a decision if you think this skewness is strong or not. Uh, we might say that it's moderate skewness with no outliers, and since it's only moderate skewness with no outliers, then it's safe to proceed. Okay, great. So now it's on to the next thing. What do we want to do next? We want to draw a picture of our sampling distribution. We put mu equals zero in the middle, mu sub d, because that's your HO, your null hypothesis. We make a note of our standard deviation again. Standard deviation of x bar sub d turned out to be we did this correctly. We got 0 0.106. So it's nice to mark off a couple of standard deviations. I like to do that. So this is 0 0.106. This is 0.212. Negative 0 0.106. And negative 0.212. And then finally, we're ready to mark off our x bar sub d, which in case we forgot, let's go back. Our average difference in the the after test score minus the before test score is right here. You see me circling at 0.375. So 0.375 goes on here. And you'll notice that's really far out. It's out over here somewhere, 0.375. And so we have a very, very small p-value, it looks like. So let's get to work on calculating that. You want to calculate a t-score. And t-score, this t-scores measure the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean. It's always going to be your average t 
difference minus HO over S of X bar sub D. So in this case, it could be 0.375 minus zero over 0 0.106. So that's telling us how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. So 0 0.375 divided by 0 0.106 gives us 0.3354. So that's actually quite a few standard deviations away. This is probably going to be a significant result. To get your p-value, there's something in the TID4 called the TCDF, cumulative density function. And what you want to do is type in 3.54, some huge number. And the next thing you'll be asked for is something called DF. DF stands for degrees of freedom. And in this problem, it's always your sample size minus 1. So degrees of freedom are going to be 12 minus 1 or 11. And we're just about ready now. So let's go do that. Second distributions, number 6, TCDF. Um, second distribution, by the way, is above the VARS key. 0.354 for the lower. The upper is just a huge number. Put, I put 1 with a whole bunch of zeros. My degrees of freedom are going to be 11. I'm going to hit paste. And I am getting an area of, or a p-value of, 0 0.002. So that means the area in this tail here, let's, uh, let's use green for it. This green area in this tail turned out to be 0 0.002, which is extremely small. So how are we going to finish this? I'm going to say something like, since our p-value, which is equal to 0 0.002, is definitely less than alpha equals, say, 0 0.05, or even alpha equals 0 0.01, which are two popular alpha levels, um, we can reject HO in favor of HA. And what we really just said here is that we found evidence to suggest that this difference is greater than zero. So that's what we think. We think that mu sub D is greater than zero. That's what the evidence suggests which means that this program for increasing dexterity must, you know, was probably effective. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.